Hi, my name is Dr. Marie Puccio from Learn English and Practice. Today, we are going to talk about 30 tips for learning English. Some of these tips you probably haven't heard other places because they are all inspired by learning theory. Today, we're going to focus on Bloom's taxonomy in the cognitive domain. It sounds complicated, but it's not. I'm going to walk you through it and also give you five tips for each stage of it. So let's get into it. First, a little bit about me and where I'm coming from. I am a PhD who loves sharing knowledge. And I actually learned Haitian Creole from zero knowledge to pretty advanced conversation, though I definitely need to practice. So I know what it's like to learn a new language and how difficult it can be. I believe practice and application are the best ways to learn English. It's not just reading and learning from a book. You need to actually speak and actually interact with people. So I also believe that mistakes are okay and that if you speak and try, that's the best way to learn. Let's get into Bloom's taxonomy for cognitive learning. If you want to go straight to the tips, I put in chapters so you can do this, but I think this part will really help you. So there are six stages and each one brings you to deeper learning. The first one is remembering. And this is where a lot of English language learners do a lot of their practice and self-study. This is the ability to recall, restate, or remember information you've learned. So memorization and just learning the information and saying it back. Next, we have understanding. This is where you are able to grasp the, inf the information and interpret it, translate it, and be able to have some level of engagement with the information. The next one, as we get deeper, is applying. So this is using the information in a context that's different from the one where it's learned. So for example, taking what you learned in class and applying it to something at home or applying it to uh, a discussion in an online forum. That would be an application. Next, we have analyzing. So this is breaking down the information into parts to understand it better. So that's a deeper level of understanding and learning. Next, we have evaluate. So this is making decisions based on in-depth reflection, criticism, and assessment. So this is where you're critical of your learning and you're really thinking things through. And lastly, the best one, the deepest learning is creating. So this is making new ideas and uh, creating new information based on what you've learned. So let's go ahead and go through some of these tips. Just so you know what to expect, I am going to do five learning activities and tips for each of these uh, components. And then at the very end, we will go to the deepest learning. So we're starting at the, uh, the basic level and going as deep as we can. So number one for remember is using flashcards. This is very popular. So this is writing words and definitions or whatever onto a card and flipping it over and you can use index cards for this to learn your new words and meanings, but there are plenty of apps and tools out there that you can use for free. I personally love Brainscape. They are not um, asking me to promote them. I just love them. And you can use their free tool to really, really learn. There's lots of grading. You can mark your level of comprehension, whether it's a one, two, three, four, and five, and it'll cycle through and give you recommendations. And then Quizlet. Quizlet is very popular and has a lot of good information. So that is learning strategy number one. Number two is making lists. So this is, uh, for example, if you made a list of 10 animals, 
10 places, 10 colors, or 10 of anything. So just use your brain. You can research, use the internet, and make lists that fit in those categories. And if you're more advanced, try to make 100. Um, and try to uh, get 100 things in your list and see if you can do it. Next, we have repeating what you hear. So you can watch YouTube videos in English, pause them, and try to say what you've heard. You can do this with TV as well or um, any audio. So this is a, a way to see if you were able to listen and can say it back. So this is, again, at the remember level. The next one, and this one is fun, is labeling things. So if you have post-its, so the um, sticky pieces of paper, you can go around your house and label what you see. The lamp, the table, the chair. Uh, you could also do this at school. And if you don't have post-its, you can use a piece of paper, a uh, little piece of paper and some tape. So this is a good way to practice interacting with your environment, just labeling things. The last learning strategy I'm going to give you for remember is memorizing vocabulary and grammar rules. So all this involves is studying English vocabulary rules and grammar and learning everything you can through repetition and just trying to remember it. A lot of people use this strategy when they have to take a test. They just cram, get all the info in their head, but sometimes they forget, which is why this is at kind of a lower level of learning, uh, but it could help you. All right, let's move into understanding. So we're going deeper into our learning. The first uh, strategy I have for you is summarizing. So write a one paragraph summary of a video or something you read. It could be a TV show, a movie, uh, pretty much anything. So read the whole thing or watch the whole thing and then try to write that little paragraph. And it doesn't have to be long. You can make it a page if you want, if you're more advanced, but a paragraph will do if you're just starting out. The second one is testing yourself. There are a lot of free English tests and quizzes online and on YouTube. So you can take evaluations to test your English level and to see if you retained the knowledge. Tests are really good for identifying what you don't know, so I would highly recommend them. The next one is dictation and translation. You might not know what these words mean, but that's okay. I'm going to explain them to you. So basically, dictation is when a native speaker or anyone is speaking and saying something, you listen, and then you translate what you've heard. So the steps for this are to listen to what you hear, write down what you've heard in English, and then translate the text into your native language. It's a great way to test how much you actually were able to comprehend and uh, where the trouble spots are. You might have to look some stuff up. So that is a great strategy. And usually it helps if the person you're listening to repeats what they're saying multiple times or speaks a little slower to make it easier for you. The next one is acting out a skit or a little play. So this is where you have a script. So you're not making things up. You have a script, you're reading it, but you use action and change the tone of your voice to match what's being said. So you're an actor and you practice something in English. The last one at the understand level is a rephrase. So take what you hear and put it into your own words. <clears throat> For example, Africa is a vast and expansive continent that is rich with cultural diversity. That might be something you hear or read. You can rephrase it and put it into your own words, like Africa is large, and has many different cultures. It's a way to show that you understand the key points of what was said. So next, we're going deeper to the apply level. This one I love. When I was learning Haitian Creole, I would do this a lot. So you can do this as you're learning English. 
and this is your English hour. So choose an hour in the day where you try to think and speak only in English. If there are others in your friend group or family who are also trying to learn English, you can do this all together. But try to force your brain to operate in that language for an entire hour. If you don't have anyone to practice with, you can watch YouTube videos. I have plenty of practice videos on this channel. So just try not to let your native language enter your brain just for an hour and see how you can do it. Next one is practicing at home. This is easier said than done if you're the only one who's learning English in your home. So you might have to practice with friends or classmates, but use the English that you've learned in class at home. So if you new, use a new word, try to use it later that day. Try to work it into the conversation. The next thing you can do is role play. This is different from the skit at the second level that we talked about. This one is where with a partner or a small group, you assign everyone a role. There's no script. You're not reading anything but you're acting out a scenario. You have a question or something you need to talk about and you act it out without a script. For example, you might have one person assigned to be the teacher, the other person assigned to be the student, and the teacher needs to tell the student that they need to do their homework and then you act that out. So that could be a great way to practice and apply what you've learned. Number four in apply is to do grammar research. When you see a sentence that has grammar that you are unfamiliar with, you research the rules and try to find out what the rule is. For example, you might see the words this, that, these, those, and you can look those up and try to understand when each word is used based on the, based on the grammar rules. So that's one thing you can do. The last one I have for you in the apply group is conversation group. So you can form a conversation group with friends or people in your class or even people you meet online. There's Reddit. There's all sorts of places where you can practice. And you speak about different topics. Just be okay with making mistakes. All you need to do is keep talking and try to express what it is you want to say. It's okay to make mistakes, but in a conversation group, you can get together and talk about your day or anything. All right. Okay. We're getting deeper. Now we are on to analyze. The first thing I have for you is writing a bio. You can write a bio of someone famous, or someone who you know really well, like your mom or dad. A bio is an overview of someone or an overview of their accomplishments. So if you search bio of anyone, like bio of Madonna online, you'll get some examples. Try doing that. You can even write one for yourself. The second thing I have for you with Analyze is compare. So you can compare, for example, two TV characters by identifying their differences and similarities. There's something called a Venn diagram that you can use to do this, or you can just make lists. So I remember and when I was teaching a class, I had people compare from the show Parks and Recreation, Ron Swanson and April Ludgate. Some of the things they had similar were that they were both a little angry and they both uh, were pretty funny. And some of the things that were different were that Ron Swanson was an older man and April Ludgate was a younger woman. So that was a way to do a comparison. Next, we have discussion cards at the analyze level. I love these. You can write at least 20 questions about a particular topic on your index cards and in a group or with one other person, you pick the cards and talk about that particular topic. Or you can make a really large deck of random questions at the beginner, intermediate, or advanced levels 
and get a chance to really, really explore a lot of different topics and vocabulary. So I love those discussion cards. The students can make them too. So you can make them or a teacher can make them. The next one, number four, is speed writing. So this is where you, can, you should write as much as you can in English in five minutes. You should be okay with making mistakes. Just force your fingers to type or your pen to move across the paper as fast as you can in the English language. It's a great way to get over that fear of, I don't know what to write. I'm going to make a mistake. It's not going to be perfect. It's okay not to be perfect. In a speed writing activity, you just get it down and try your best. And then the last one I have for you in Analyze is to make a table. So this is where you would make a table to organize some information. You can, for example, do one on things I do during the day. So a component for the morning, afternoon, night. So in the morning, I wake up, I brush my teeth, I get ready for the day, I have my coffee, a lot of coffee. You do all sorts of things. In the afternoon, I have, uh, I have my lunch. I, I tend to eat late. I have my lunch. I go back to work at night. I get ready for bed. I watch TV. So you can categorize things into those different categories and put them into a table. You can use Microsoft Office or Google Word documents to make your table or Excel if you like that uh, tool. Now we're moving into evaluate. We're second to last in terms of deep learning, so we're getting pretty deep with our learning. The first one is keeping a journal. This is where you write in a journal every day. You write at least one page, and I challenge you to do even more if you're an advanced learner. And if you don't know what to write about, just talk about what you did the previous day or what you're planning on doing that day. Of course, it should be in English, and it's a great way to practice. The second one is to grade a paper. So this is where you can correct and provide feedback for someone else's language, English language paper. Ideally, it'll be someone who is at a lower level than you, but you can do this for a peer. And if you have a homework assignment, you can evaluate each other's papers and give the feedback, and that can give you some pretty deep learning because you're being critical in your examination of the paper. The third thing here is to make a list of advantages and disadvantages of something. You can, for example, identify a big decision, like buying a dog. What are the pros and the cons? So, for example, it might be a pro that dogs are friendly, they keep you company, they force you to walk because you have to walk them, but some of the cons are that you have to take them out frequently. They can get sick, uh, which can be very expensive, especially in the United States. Um, all sorts of different things that are cons. The fourth thing I have for you is to create a lesson plan. This is at the evaluate level. And this is where you would write a lesson plan for an English teacher on a topic that you want to learn. So you would identify learning objectives, activities, write notes for the teacher to lecture on, and basically create a lesson. So that is a nice way to learn. Lastly here, we have debate. And I would do debates all the time when I was teaching English and all sorts of other topics. This is where you pick a controversial topic and divide your groups into teams. Or if you are just practicing with one other person, you can be on one side and they can be on another side. So you allow the teams to prepare an opening statement. They get together, they come up what their main arguments are, and then they should take turns doing two-minute rebuttals or one minute if you're working at the beginner level. And if you're doing this one, one other person, 
just follow those guidelines and argue like one side versus the other side. And it's okay if you don't believe in the argument you're making. This is for practice. Now we're moving on to the create level. This is the deepest level of learning. The first one I like is to create a memo. In a lot of the research I did for this video, it talked about writing research papers and how that was uh, a really great way to have deep learning. And honestly, I don't think that applies so well to English language learners at the beginner, intermediate, and uh, the beginnings of the advanced levels. If you're super advanced, go ahead and write a research paper. But if you're not, a memo will work just fine. This is where you would write a memo on an aspect of the English language. A memo is a short and informative document that emphasizes key ideas and applications. So you can do some research to prepare that memo, but basically, it's like a briefing. It gives the key info. Uh, and it can be a page, maybe longer if you want, but memos are not supposed to be long. The second one, and I love this one, is that you teach someone. You teach someone new English skills uh, to uh, ideally someone who is at a lower English level than you. So if you are an intermediate speaker or an advanced speaker and you have a friend or relative who's trying to learn English, try to teach them some of the things you know and prepare those lessons for them, work with them, and you'll find that through the process of teaching, your knowledge gets deeper. This third one here is to create a presentation. So a YouTube video is almost kind of like a presentation. You could create a YouTube video or you can be in a classroom, you can use PowerPoint, or a um, poster board, a whiteboard, and basically deliver the presentation to an audience. If you don't have an audience, you can deliver the presentation to an empty room. That's just fine. But research something, understand something related to the English language, put together vocabulary, grammar, everything relevant to your topic, and uh, put that together in a presentation and deliver it. And you'll find that can be some really deep learning. The fourth one is to write stories. So write creative stories that use the English topics you want to learn. This is a great way to practice vocabulary and practice uh, the grammar and uh, everything that you've learned. And I like that it's creative stories because you're making things up. You're writing about things that did not actually happen. So uh, you're using parts of your brain that will help that information stick. The last one is to make a learning plan. So this is where you design a curriculum and a learning strategy for yourself. You can draw on many different sources. There are a lot of places to learn English. And if you're in a place where you don't have a lot of in-person resources online, there is so much you can use. You'll find <coughs> You'll find practice videos on this channel that you can use where you can listen, repeat, and practice. And there are videos from so many different YouTubers that you can also use in your learning. Recap, we talked about the remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, and create components of Bloom's taxonomy on cognitive learning. And at each of these stages, there is important learning. But a lot of English language learners, in my experience, tend to focus really hard on remember and understand. So I would challenge you to take some of those strategies we talked about and uh, on analyze, evaluate, and create, and apply those to your own learning. Your learning should happen across all of these categories. So please use the learning strategies and tips that we reviewed today. You'll find other videos on this channel that are more focused on practice. And I encourage you to do that because, or use those videos because they engage you at multiple levels of learning. So please like, comment, and subscribe. 
and in the comments, tell me what other kind of videos you want. I'm still exploring what I want this channel to be, so I would love your feedback and love to know what you like. Thanks so much. Again, I'm Marie with Learn English in Practice, and I will see you soon. Bye.